Uh, amen to that. Thank you, Jesus. And so we're at week three here of this series called Empowered. Um, and we're joining vineyards all over the country in this. Um, um, this week, I'm deviating a little bit from what the script was for the week because it was a very long kind of rambling um, sermon. Uh, so with, with no outline per se, because they were giving outlines for the first couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm kind of doing my own thing here a little bit and focusing on this, um, on the same topic. It's about hearing the voice of God and the prophetic. So I want to read a few verses at the start, uh, then we'll jump right in. I keep forgetting to put my glasses, I have new glasses now that I don't need to take off. I can keep these on. Remind me of that, because I... <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, Numbers eleven twenty nine. Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? Are you worried about me, Joshua? That these folks are all prophesying out there. That uh, Edad and Melbad or whatever, they're back in the camp prophesying and they're not out here next to you. Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them all. Little did Moses know how that desire flows from the very heart of God. This is God's, God's intent uh, to create a prophetic people. And it comes to a, you know, kind of a crescendo in this prophetic word uh, from the book of Joel. Then after doing all of those things, and you've got to read Joel, it's not a very long book. All of these things that God is going to do to the enemies of Israel, um, you know, for all the evil that they have done, and, you know, God will redeem his people. After doing all of those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. So again, not just on, on kings, not just on on people, you know, who are carrying out the prophetic office, uh, not just on the privileged few, on all people. And so this is, it goes in hand with the, the, this wistful prayer of, of Moses. Oh, that all of God's people would be prophets. <laughs> yeah, could you turn that? I'm so sorry. I... I just want to say. Maybe it's God calling. Yeah, God calling. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that better be God, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> First Corinthians 14, and we're going to focus on, on, on just a you know a few verses in First Corinthians 14, because it's the really the clearly the one place where we kind of get a feel for the way that a New Testament church service should flow. And of course, there's a lot of freedom in that. But Paul gives here some distinctives and instructions. So he says, pursue love. Remember, he just was talking about love earlier. And we'll drill down a little bit uh, into this these verses later. But I just want to read them now. Pursue love, yet desire earnestly gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands. But in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. He had already been talking about the gift of tongues. This is interesting. Sometimes tongues can be a miraculous enabling to speak a foreign language. Um, but this is uh, it also, it, this is kind of interesting because if, if the person were, if this is just foreign language, then why would it be a mystery? Somebody would actually understand it out there, right? So uh, this is also what we call angelic tongues or glossolalia. Um, it, it's the kind of thing that we hear, you know, specifically in Pentecostal and charismatic churches. More on that later. But one who prophesies speaks to men, speaks to people for edification and exhortation and consolation. Edification, sometimes it's translated strengthening, 
exhortation, which is the Greek word paraklesis, very similar to the word that Jesus uses to describe the Holy Spirit. It means one who comes alongside as an advocate. So a person who prophesies speaks uh, to, to strengthen, to, to you know, come alongside someone who's hurting, someone who, who needs prayer, someone who needs uh, to hear from God, somebody who needs a friend. And, and for consolation, for consolation. Sometimes people need uh, to, to in, in, oh, by the way, this is a very interesting word. Uh, let me not forget that. Um, that word is used, there's an Old Testament translation which was done in Greek called the Septuagint. When the Septuagint was, was written, the word that was used uh, that's translated consolation uh, means uh, it's the same word that's used for messianic salvation, for messianic salvation. So c- consolation, when we prophesy for consolation, we're we're bringing you know the the very essence of of God's saving message to someone. So this is really important. That you know the the bottom line is that these things should should not be ignored, and you know sadly they they often are. Or um, Folks say things like, well, when Paul says prophecy here, he's really talking about preaching. I'll tell you, you know, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, it's impossible to translate prophesy as preaching. There's words in the, in the New Testament and the Greek very specific for that. And that doesn't come from me. I'm no expert in the Greek. I took some Greek in seminary. But that comes from people like Jack Deere. I'll talk a little bit more about Jack Deere, who was a, uh, is a, um, uh, taught Greek at a seminary level, at a graduate level, uh, and he says that about this word. One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So if I'm speaking in tongues in an ecstatic language and it's not translated, I'm edifying myself. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. I, we need to build ourselves up. And, and so for that reason, we should... We should uh, Speak in tongues as much as we can. You know, again, more on that. But one who prophesies edifies the church. So if if the tongue is translated, if somebody gives a translation, it builds up um, the whole church. Now I wish that you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you would prophesy. And greater is one who prophesies than one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets, so that the whole church may receive edifying. For if I pray, and now I'm jumping ahead um, a few verses here. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I'm saying. Again, this is why you can't strictly translate it as language, because if Paul, you know, in a church like Corinth that was international and very diverse, uh, was using another language, somebody would understand it. Certainly he probably would. He, spoke, he speaks many languages, Paul does. So this is a static. This is something else. Well, what then shall we do? Shall I do? I will pray in the Spirit, but I will also pray in words I understand. See that? So tongues, when I'm praying and there's no translation for my own edification, I'm praying in the Spirit. You remember when Paul in another place says, praying always in the Spirit? He's encouraging this. He's encouraging prayer in tongues. And this is, you know, again, I, I just want to say this is something that we can't ignore. Um, we need to be built up. And this is one of the ways that the Lord builds us up. This is something that we need to look, if we're not walking in this, because Paul says, I wish you all spoke in tongues, we need to seek it. He's telling us here that we need to seek gifts. We need to seek the prophetic enabling. And I, I want to ask you this morning, how much time and energy have you devoted to seeking the gifts of the Spirit? That's a rhetorical question. You don't need to answer that now. For if you praise God only in the Spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? How can they join you in giving thanks when they don't understand what you're saying? For you are giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not edified. Then Paul says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Paul needed this gift in the ministry that he was carrying out. 
um, I gave a copy of the book. If you want to know more about that, I, I gave you one. I bought another one. I forgot to bring it. I was going to give it to Carol and, you know, to pass those around. There's a lot of good books written on the gift of tongues. They Speak in Other Tongues is the classic. You know, it was written in the 60s that really triggered so much just amazing, uh, and just an, it was a move of God after that book was published. I think several million copies have been printed uh, by John Sherrill. So he says, however, in the church I desired to speak five words with my mind so I may instruct others also, rather than ten thousands in a, in a tongue that's not interpreted. So it's important to understand and to edify others. Let's uh, pause. Now, let me read this. Am I going to read this now? Maybe not. I mean, let's, let's, let's hold it there for a second. Let's hold it there for a second. So today I just want to briefly focus on the gift of prophecy in the Bible and talk about ways that we can implement this gift uh, from God. Uh, and we need it because this is one of the weapons of the warfare. He says, our warfare. So what? I'm not involved in war. Yes, you are. If you're a follower of Jesus, you've entered the theater of war. And you have two options. You can run away from it, or you can engage. You can put on the full armor and engage. If we ignore the armor, then we, we, we really are we're in a bad place. Put on the full armor of God, Paul says. This shouldn't be a cause for fear. This should be a cause for rising up in the strength of the Lord because it's really about His power. Weapons of our warfare, not just Paul's warfare, the church's warfare, they're not carnal, they're not fleshly, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. How many want to pull down strongholds? And, and then he says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is why we need the prophetic. Tongues untranslated, tongues translated, prophetic utterance of every kind. We need that because we're at war. These are things that God is giving us. And they, what, what are they able to do? They're able to cast down arguments, things that people say, false ideas, false habits, thought patterns, bad habits that have, er, the enemy has erected in people's thinking. Every high thing. That's a, an allusion to an altar, to a place of, of idolatry that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So this is a part of discipleship. The, the discipleship requires warfare. It requires the weapons that God has given us. And so for that reason, I want to introduce and focus on the gift of prophecy in the Bible. What is the prophetic gift and is it relevant to us right now, today? Of course it is, right? Here's a definition. Prophecy is a gift from God that enables individuals to receive and communicate divine messages, insights, and revelations to others. It's often associated with predicting future events, but it can also include messages of encouragement, warning, or edification. I, I've, I've experienced, and so have you, I'm sure, prophetic utterances. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a book that uh, Jack Deere wrote uh, a year ago, um, Jack, did you meet Jack when Jack was at, were you there in those days at Anaheim Vineyard? Jack was um, a professor at Dallas Theological Seminary whose life was changed, and he talks about this when he meets John Wimber. Dallas Theological Seminary, if you're not aware, is was then, not so much anymore, they're kind of moving to a more accepting place, but they were like a bastion of cessationism that the, the supernatural gifts, including prophetic utterance and tongues, stopped because now we've got the Bible. And if we have the Bible, then we don't need prophetic utterance. That was the, the argument. And they explained things away with all sorts of bad hermeneutics. And um, Anyway, Jack you know, awakened to the reality, and he encounters not only John Wimber, but he encounters John Paul Jackson and some of the prophetic people who were at Kansas City at that time. And John Paul Jackson reads his mail. 
All of this is in this amazing book. This will be a great book to read for book club, maybe. Everybody say book club. Come on. All right. Yeah. Why should we focus on prophecy? Book club. (laughs) We should focus on prophecy because the Holy Spirit does. He inspired 1 Corinthians. And he says, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So it, I, I, I pray and I want to awaken a desire to seek the spiritual gifts, to go after them. Earnestly desire. It's not just a, a casual sort of, you know, haphazard kind of thing, but a focused searching after with all of our heart for the, for the gifts. Even if you've walked in these things before, you know, Kathy was reminding me that I was a lot more prophetic back in my younger days when we first met. I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't know that much about it. I just kind of did it. Um, and uh, anyway, the Holy Spirit is focused on this. Also, it's vital to church life, and it isn't something we add if there's time. We don't avoid it because it's embarrassing or it's uncomfortable. <coughs> we don't ignore it because others might abuse it. And it is abused. We don't shy away from it because of bad experiences either. It's a mistake to do that. You know, I've been in churches where they at one point, you know, were giving place to this and all of a sudden they shut it down because of one or two bad things that happened. Bad. And, you know, one of the things too is that we need to learn that in the New Testament, the prophetic utterance is to be considered and judged by others. It's not the same as the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Paul talks about this very clearly, and it's, it's clear in 1 Corinthians, that when there's a prophetic word given in the church, especially in the church, it's to be held and considered, not despised. This is something you know, Paul was emphatic about. He says to the Thessalonians, in everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't quench. Do not quench the Spirit. That's in the imperative. That's a command. Don't quench the Spirit. Some translations put it, say, don't put out the Spirit's fire. And then he says in the very next verse, so this is sort of like a two clauses together, a kind of a couplet. They're, they're related. Do not despise prophetic utterance. So one of the ways that we can quench the Spirit of God and put out the Spirit's fire is by despising. Um, Robertson uh, says that this, the word despise, the A.T. Robertson, the Greek scholar um, of the 20th century, early 20th century, he says that the word means to consider as nothing, to, to give it very little value. Don't do that. Both, both of these commands... Uh, don't quench the spirit, don't despise uh, uh, prophetic utterance, are in the imperative tense, they're commands, they're given adjacent. Again, a lot of what I'm saying here, I've taken from um, some things, you know, from Jack's book, and this is the cover of it, I know it's kind of tiny, I can't make that any bigger. Uh, He wrote a book called um, Surprised by the Voice of God, it was published in Something like 1989, 1990, something like that. Tremendous book. If you don't have that, get that. This one is really good, too. I, I was reading it yesterday, and I also have the, uh, the audible. If you have an audible account, you can listen to it read, I think, by, um, by the author. So, ah, pursue it. Go after it. Pursue Pursue love. Let love be your highest goal. But you should also desire, you should also desire the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Did I skip over something? I, no, I missed, a, I missed this. Um, well, yeah, let me say this about Jack, because when he first encountered the prophetic gift, for the first time, many of his fellow scholars at Dallas Seminary told him that Paul was talking about preaching, but you can't make that claim. The Greek doesn't allow you to do it. By the way, Jack was a tenured professor at Dallas at this time when he became friends with John Wimber. Somebody told him, 
you're going to be fired because of your friendship with John Wimber. And he said, no, no, I'm, I'm a tenured professor. A year or so later, maybe less, he was fired. He was kicked out. Nobody would have any kind of discussion with him about the reason why. He was just let go. What's that? They were canceling people then. They were canceling people then, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's nothing new. Yeah, the cancel culture is not new. And the cancel culture is not just a... Um, not just something that we find in non-Christian culture. It's also found in, in Christian cultures. So, yeah, and, you know, so these folks, you know, basically said, no, we don't, we don't want to hear about it. But Jack was so convinced that he was experiencing God in powerful ways, you know, it was just undeniable. And if you read the book, you'll find out why. So we're going to look at two words in, um, whoops, in 1 Corinthians 14 that emphasize this call to prophesy. Because that's pretty much the, the time that we have. And I really, um, I, I really you know, believe that, I, and I can say this with regards to the special en- en- enabling of the Spirit, I want to be able to convince you and encourage you to burn with passion for others through the prophetic gifting. Because that's the gist of what's going on here. Love and the prophetic are, go hand in hand. They're, 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 they're just inseparable. And the prophetic and a friendship with God and intimacy with God are inseparable. As we grow in intimacy with God, we will grow in the prophetic. As we grow in intimacy with God, we will grow in love for others. As we approach people in love, the the Spirit of God will flow as a river from us. Because he's not in there, as Bill Johnson likes to say, he's not in, in here as a lake, he's in here as a river. So pursue. Let it be your highest goal. I mean, this is like, this is your priority. How can I love God more? How can I grow in this? And as we ask these questions, the Spirit of God comes along. Holy Spirit says, hey, I'll help you with that. Because that's my priority too. And this is where everything sort of takes off. So Paul had just spoken about the, the, the supremacy of agape love in chapter 13. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels but don't have love, I, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have agape, if I have not love, I'm nothing. Love never fails, but if there's gifts of prophecy, they will be done away with. If there's tongues, they will cease. If there's knowledge, they will be done away with. Because we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, this is a, a principle of, of philosophy that Paul is using here. When something perfect comes, the partial is done away. He's not saying here, you know, because the cessation is like, and this was John MacArthur's argument for many years. I heard it often on Sunday. The perfect is the scripture. We have the perfect canon of scripture. Therefore, we don't need to. The partial done away. Tongues. Tongues is partial. You can't do that. You can't do that with the Greek. The, we, the, the Greek language doesn't allow you to do that. And John knows that, but he just keeps saying it anyway. <laughs> and then he says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I have also uh, been known. Just as also I've been fully known. But now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. What is Paul saying? Um, First, that the exercise of the prophetic in the absence of agape love empties it of meaning, robs it of its true content, and destroys prophetic ministry, I should add. I've seen this happen. I had a conversation with a dear friend. Um, We we talked over two hours on the phone about a, 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 a prophet who had a significant ministry written some really good books. I would still read those books today. But he's disqualified himself because of some of the things that are going on in his life. Um, th- this, the absence of, of love for others and for God. Um, so what does this look like um, in, oh, in second, let me say this. The gift of prophecy, I've mentioned this already, is inseparable from our call to love others, to love God and to love others. I, I fished out the 
1 Corinthians 14.1 from the Amplified Version. The Amplified Version is pretty useful. I wouldn't use it to do word studies, but it does a great job in amplifying important Greek words in the Bible. It was done by the Lachman Foundation. It was a great work. There's a woman over there at uh, Talbot uh, working with the Lachman Foundation that devoted an enormous amount of time for many years. Here's how it translates this verse. Eagerly pursue. What does that look like? Have you ever been on an eager pursuit of something? I remember when I was eagerly pursuing Kathy. <laughs> I devoted all my time and energy because um, my, my, uh, my requests to, 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 to go out with her were turned down. I, was it more than once? It may have been more than once. But I pursued. I, I would leave these goofy little messages, you know, look for reasons to kind of keep me in her mind, um, all kinds of clumsy, weird stuff. Uh, but anyway, I, I pursued, <laughs> I pursued, and, 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 and then things changed. <laughs> Seek, go after, uh, to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest. You see how, you know, like, you know, sometimes we, we sort of very lackadaisically say, oh, I don't have that gift. And now, you know, God doesn't have it for me. I, you know, I tried 15 years ago. I really give it, gave it the old college try. Nothing happened. Uh, it, God, Kathy was probably your second best pursuit. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Hey, Stan, the, you know, have, uh, what That's is it? Prophetic. Yeah, no, that is definitely <laughs> prophetic. Flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. <laughs> but our father who is in heaven. <laughs> that is so true. Um, yeah. And, you know, remember I was talking to you about messianic salvation comes through comfort? Uh, it literally, the, the, the Kathy's, Kath, you know, what Kathy brought into my life really was salvation in many ways. Uh, I would love to elaborate on that on more now, but I won't. Um, but I love the way this is amplified, especially that you may prophesy, interpret the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching. What does that look like in the context of ministry and prayer? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> what does that look like? What does it look like? It looks like this, Stan. That <laughs> <laughs> we didn't set that up. That, <laughs> that when I'm praying for someone, one way that I can eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love that God wants me to pursue is to stand before that person I'm praying for and ask the Spirit, what does my Father in heaven want to do and say for them? Amen. To see people as people that were created in the image of God, no matter where they're at, or how far they have fallen, how difficult they might be, they are an opportunity to bring prophetic ministry and love, the Father's love, to them. So this is ultimately the essence of love, to want God's heart for another person. And if we approach prophetic ministry with that, it changes the atmosphere. It creates the flow, as I mentioned, of the Spirit. This is the posture that brings the revelation of the heart of the Father through the prophetic ministry. I want to ask Kathy to come and in about two or three minutes give this now. You can come now, but it, she's going to do it in a few minutes. No, you can come now. Yeah. Um, just to give you an illustration of this, um, about a month and a half ago, we got an email. Uh, somebody who was in Paris at the time saw our website. They were searching for a vineyard church that prays for people. Somehow our, our humble little website popped up. And so I, I responded to the email. I know, right? To this person I don't know. I'd never met her before. And uh, I said, we would love to pray for you. I don't know how we can do this. Are you going to be back in Southern California? She, in her, e her first email, she told me that she had gone through a very difficult breakup and that she was in pain. And it wasn't something that I could easily dismiss. I just felt the Holy Spirit say, do this, run with this. 
And, and so I reached out and I said, let's, let's try to make this happen. But I think it would be best, given what you've gone through, that my wife uh, would pray for you because she's really good at that. And so I sold Kathy on that. And it, it, <laughs> it took a while. It was real warfare connecting this. Um, and she came back. Uh, she travels back and forth a lot to Europe and then came back to Florida. And we finally were able to connect. So I want to have Kathy share what happened. I don't even know some of the things that she's going to share here. Go ahead. So I have three minutes, right? You've got three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Then we're pretty much done here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, it, was, it was an amazing phone call. So she's sharing with me. And of course, we have to, you know, anything anybody tells you pastorally, that's like, you know, that's why we, so we're not giving any names and I'm going to try to not give you all the details because this is somebody else's per, private life, right? But I just, but the, the, the God part is so amazing. So, so this, uh, this precious girl, um, she's like 25 years old and she's, comes from a Christian background, even, even her parents are prophetic. And so she is, five weeks ago, the person she thought she was going to spend the rest of her life with um, breaks up with her, and she's utterly heartbroken. Now, she didn't f- feel, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to, I know these thi- there's a lot to unpack here, but so we, we make no judgments of her, like they weren't, he wasn't. Quite, he's a pre-Christian. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And but she didn't feel that that stop, like like don't have anything to do with it. She felt like a green light that was to see him. So I, you know, I can't comment on that because I'm not there. So anyway, um, but now it's ended, and now she's pulling into the Lord. And she was really, really seeking the Lord in a lot of pain, but really seeking the Lord, and went back home to be with her parents. So. So just wanting prayer because feeling very, very brokenhearted. So I just shared some personal stories um, about my life and my husband's life. But then we came to the prayer time. And I just felt from the Lord. Um, I said, and I, I, initially I was incredibly cautious with the way I framed it. See, we can get a word from the Lord but you have the choice of how you frame that to another person. So you can be very harsh or you can be very gentle, you know? And so I was very, very gentle because I was feeling an impression, but I, I didn't want to come off as if I was dictating things she should do. So I just said, look, it, I'm going to share what I'm sensing, but um, if it doesn't bear witness with you, feel free to throw it away. And if it's if it and if it does bear witness with you, well then you know God's confirming something. I go, I feel like you're gonna have a conversation with him again. And in this conversation, it's gonna be no holds bar. You're not going to hold back about your relationship with God and how important God is. There there will be a God conversation that you're going to have. And God wants you to be so bold in that conversation. He doesn't want you to leave anything unsaid. Because if you're dating somebody, you think, oh, I have time. So I don't want to put too much pressure on the relationship. But now that he's ended it, it's like you're kind of to go no holds barred. And she's like, oh, my gosh. That's exactly what my mother told me. (laughs) So that bore witness to her, right? So right now... She has been crying and crying and crying, and I can totally relate to that. I've had several sad situations in my life, and I could very much identify with her and her heart and what she's going through emotionally. But then we start, I said, let's pray, and I pray in tongues, and then I got another word of knowledge. And the second word of knowledge is I go, you're not going into this meeting with him like all weepy and brokenhearted, you're going to be like radiant. Like, like when Moses met with God and he comes back and he's radiant, I go, he's going to like, no, whoa, this girl has something. Because in the midst of all of her pain, she's like radiant. She said, she said, you've just described a dream I had. I'm sitting on the porch sharing with him And she says, you're using even the exact word. The Lord says, you'll be radiant. 
in, in the dream, the word radiant was used. And she, I said, well, wow. see, you're already hearing God. God just wants you to know that you are going to have this conversation, that he's going to, he is touching you now, he's healing you now, and that is how you'll be because I, I don't know you anything. I don't know anything about your life. And God want you're hearing God, he is with you, and this will happen. And so I, it was just so, it was just so great because she felt so deeply encouraged. She doesn't know me. We had met online knowing, knowing nothing. And yet God wanted to encourage her. And, and, and for me, when, when Ralph is talking about prophecy, um, to me, I love prophecy so much because when I have been prophesied to, I have felt like the God of the universe sees me. The God of the universe sees me, sees me. And it has been life, life, life giving for me personally. And just to share one story of him, because he doesn't share his own prophetic um, stories. I was like, tell a story, Ralph. <laughs> one time we were in Venezuela and he was leading worship. And he, he was leading worship and I was on the keyboard and singing and he... It, um, started to prophesy before, you know, instead of transitioning right to the sermon, he said, somebody here, you felt like giving up. And then, in other words, giving up suicide. You felt like killing yourself this week. And you were, but you're here. You didn't do it. You're here. And, and he starts to, like, tell the thoughts the, the, what the person's thinking as they want to commit suicide. He starts to read their mail, starts to tell their thoughts. Three people responded to that word and got the whole church praying for them as a result of him listening to the Lord and delivering that. And that person said, God sees me. He sees how deep, how dark it is. And he cares. He doesn't want me to do this. And so you can save a life. You can save a life through prophecy. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, come on up. I'm going to skip the rest of this anyway. Because I, I want to... I'll do this in some other way, but I want to show a video after this. Okay, I'll be quick. No, yeah, take um, your time. As Ralph was talking, and it's like, you know, I, I don't know if um, some of you know, but I participate in The Well, which is a prophetic ministry at PIHOP. And, and to do that, they have... Um, so PIHOP, Pasadena International House of Prayer. And they have um, classes on the prophetic. And, and it is about... Um, like, like Kathy was saying, like you get a word from the Lord and it's just about how you deliver it. And you can be harsh or you can be gentle. You can be like, you know, God expressing God's love towards that person. But sometimes you get a word or you get a scripture verse and you're going, oh my goodness, this is like, uh, how do I say this? And, and that's what the class does. And they give you opportunity to, to practice with, with one another. And if you've never experienced getting a word of prophecy, on Wednesday, on Saturday nights, um, you can go on to, or you can go on their website and you can sign up for the well, and you can come in. and We have we ministered last night to about I think she said 65 people come through, and each person gets two teams, um, and each team has two people on it, two or three people on it, and they've all been through the classes, they've been trained, they've been vetted, so they kind of. Um, yeah, try and keep those really issues, yeah. you know, to the to the minimum. There's feedback forms that people fill out when they're done. So um, anyway, so if you were interested in coming, you can go onto the website, sign up, and um, you get two sessions: eight minutes with one team and eight minutes with another team. And some of the feedback forms we get, they'll say both teams prophesied the same thing over me, or they had the same scripture verse, or so that again, that just that confirmation, like you have with the dream. Oh my, that's the dream. So, and it's just um, so if you're interested in receiving a word of prophecy and you haven't, and and it is very life giving. You can sign up for that every Saturday night. Um, and they also take walk-ins too. And you know what's cool about that is that you go there and often it's people uh, prophesying to you that don't know you. 
Oh, I for almost uh, last night, I think I only knew like one, barely. Yeah. But it's people you don't know. And you come in and you sit down. The person comes in and sits down. There is no conversation. It is like, come Holy Spirit, show yeah. us what you have for this person. Show us your heart for this person. And we're listening to the Lord. And then we just start. Yeah. And sometimes God will give us a picture or a scripture verse or whatever, just to, to, to comfort, encourage, and strengthen. And so it's, it, it's amazing. And so if you want to receive, there's an opportunity to receive. If you want to learn more, if you want to eagerly pursue <laughs> the prophetic, they have classes in that. So um, anyway. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks for sharing that, Cheryl. And they can talk to you about more, more details on that. And, and the first time a prophecy comes to you, I, I got a loud voice. The first time a prophecy comes to you, you may not expect it, but you'll know, you'll know it's true. You, for me, you were there, and it, it, you can't speak until God says, "Okay, you can speak now." But be mm-hmm. willing to say what God says. Yeah. You know it's important. Amen. Amen. There's a lot on the prophetic. Um, I was going to say some things here about from Jesus' life and Paul's life. You know, Jesus, those who say, well, all we need, need is really the Bible. Jesus was, he had the Bible down stone cold. <laughs> all right? Stone. But if, if, you, if you just focus on, if you focus on the Gospel of John, you see, and I had all these verses um, I just really want to jump ahead because our time is kind of thin here. Over and over and over again, he focuses on hearing the Father's voice. And he tells the, he tells the, the religious people, the, the Pharisees, he says to them, you search the scriptures, but you don't know God. You know, you don't hear his voice. I'm paraphrasing that, but over and over and over again, there's that whole discourse in, 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 uh, in chapter 5. And then, you know, Paul, um, in, especially from Acts 16, Paul uh, gets a vision. You know, that's a prophetic encounter about a, a man, a Macedonian man, saying, you know, come, come here. And his obedience to that vision, right? He didn't have a Bible verse for that. I'm not diminishing the scriptures. I love the scriptures. I, I have more Bibles than you can imagine. Literally. I have one today. I'm going to give it to Eric. Because the Holy Spirit told me to give you this Bible. Yeah. The Lord wants me to diminish the number of Bibles that I have. <laughs> I love the Bible. I, I read the Bible every day. And God speaks to me through the Scripture also. But there's moments when, you know, we need a word, a specific word from the Lord. And if, if Paul had not obeyed that heavenly vision and gone to where he went to, he met, uh, was he met Lydia as a result. But this is really interesting, by the way. It was a man, but he goes there and he meets Lydia, and, and that the rest is history, because this woman was, you know, such a powerful minister uh, uh, with him and helping to plant churches. Anyway, um, yeah, so how can I pursue love? I, I just want to finish with this. How can I pursue love and desire uh, the spiritual gifts. These are all these Jesus verses. They're all good. Maybe I'll put them online somehow. First of all, pray for it. Pray for it. Pray for it. Pray and pray. Pursue. Don't give up. God wants to use their spiritual warfare. Their spiritual warfare marshaled against you to stop you from being everything God wants you to be. Don't don't just come to that point where you say, well, you know, if God wanted it for me, he'd do it. If it were that way, then there wouldn't be all these proactive calls to pursue it. Right? It's automatic. You just walk in. No. Pursue it. Pursue it. Desire it. Secondly, read about how God has moved in others. For instance, Jack's book. And thirdly, practice it. And that's what I want to do now. Um, this brother Eric is so special. I'm glad that you know we were able to spend a lot, you know, some time to more time than before. Because when he's come here to Pasadena, Monrovia, the 
well, this area. Uh, it was for, we were both in class and, you know, writing papers and getting headaches and, uh, you know, just a lot of stuff going on. But you know what he said to me after spending time with you all here last week? He said, Monrovia Vineyard is going to become my church. <laughs> and I say amen to that. And your church will become our church too. Uh, and uh, we will, you're, you're, you know, God will knit our hearts together. Um, I was, began to tell you that a, a friend of ours named Jason Lewis, who's a, a missionary in Thailand, went to visit uh, Eric, and he made a video. And I hope this, this works well. Um, and I don't know if we need to turn up volume here, but I want you to see this, and then what I want to do is we, to finish is surround our brother with uh, all of us and minister and prophesy to him. So let's watch this uh, and you'll get an idea of what his uh, home city looks like because he's not even, you know, Kampala is the main city. He's three or four hours from Kampala. I'm talking about the interior, the heart of Africa, right? So so here's the video. And I'll get out of the way. a good photographer. I'm going to turn off my mic to see if that makes any difference. Next one is uh, in there. So I'll stop it here because uh, Jason went on to Nairobi also. Uh, but um, that gives us a sort of a feel for what it looks like in. in uh, I wish this were this were were bigger. But um, Eric, do you want to add anything to that? Do you want to say anything? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, come on up here. Come right. on, so people can see you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I forget that camera doesn't follow faces. All right. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, Pastor, for, for, for this video. And uh, of course, Jason came and visited us and uh, he took the shot of this. But uh, we are glad for what God is doing back home and. Uh, Saving people, healing people, we are preaching the gospel, we are doing all this work of the, of the ministry. So it's good that uh, you showed that video. And, and you can friend him, he's on Facebook. Uh, yeah, Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A B A A? Yeah. Two A's? A- yes, yes. Abasa, right? Yes, I am on the fr- Facebook and uh, YouTube and uh, the ministry on the Facebook as well. Uh, maybe I'll share with you some uh, cards together. And uh, yeah, we can keep in touch. You can follow that. 
Uh, I have things I write on the Facebook and uh, my, my blog there. I have a lot of sermons that I write on the Facebook and put there. And I'm going so much more so on um, YouTube. I am just mm, looking for some uh, e uh, what, recording. When I've done some good recording, then I'll have a lot of it <coughs> on, the, on the YouTube. And uh, what we saw there, there is also radio ministry. We have a local radio station. And we have a chance to be there and minister not only to the church, but also to millions of the people who listen and tune into that wow. radio. You can be part of that ministry. You all can be part of that ministry. Wow. Thank you, Thank wow. you Pastor. Yeah, there's photos on his yeah. uh, Facebook of yeah. you and Jason on the air. And yeah. So he wants us to come. You know, yeah, yeah, sure. We got Kathy Crooks to visit. Maybe we can all do it in one yeah. fell swoop. Yeah, yeah, he's coming. Yeah. Maybe we can put a link to his YouTube page in. Yeah, in, on our. I'll do that. I'll yeah. put it on our Monrovia Vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or link yeah. it to this this uh, video. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Great. Facebook page is Avasa Eric, I think. Avasa Eric. A B A A S A. E R I C. So Eric and then Abbas. Wow. Yes, Abbas. Okay. Great, great. great. That's, that's What's that? Great. It's Abbas You're right. Okay. You have it. Yeah. La oh, last name Bas first. You got to do that. Abbas. Last name first. That's how okay. we do it. Great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Great. Now, are are you closing out and we're praying for the sign, or that's all going to be online? Um. You know, we should keep it online. I think uh, just so that uh, those who are online, if you're if you're watching us, we're going to pray and minister to Eric uh, prophetically. Uh, and I think one way that maybe we can are we able to kind of swing this around, or just I need wisdom. I need wisdom on this. Yeah, there's too much too busy up here. So we'll have Eric sit here. And if you have a word for Eric, if you have you know something you want to share, uh, let us know on um, on the chat, and we will we will deliver that to him. Yeah. So we'll keep this microphone. So if as we surround him and pray, um, whoever is praying and prophesying. Um, we're going to ask you to use the mic so that it, it's heard. Yeah. I mean, those words are very important for me. What's that? Can we? I've never done this. I'm so nervous. Does that work? Too far. Hallelujah. Yeah, so, yeah, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and uh, through, through all of us here, would you uh, minister to our brother for, for strengthening, for um, exhortation, and, and for comfort to minister the fullness of the salvation of Jesus in some way to him, uh, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I'm going to give you this mic so I don't, if I hold it too close. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robbie, I feel like you're supposed to be up here with us. <laughs> I feel like you're supposed to be up here with us, pray. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. This way? No. Thank you, Father. Sometimes um, it's good to just, you know, uh, be still and wait. Sometimes you get a picture of something, you'll get an image of something. Uh, that the Lord wants you to pray. Um, you may have... Pro the prophetic is about the heart, about engaging the heart. 
we don't disengage the mind, they work in tandem, but we're engaging our heart, we're engaging our feelings too. Everything, all, all of that is God-given. So we ask the Holy Spirit come and, and minister. Um, maybe there's something, I'm just going to pray generally and see what, the, how it would flow. Father, we, we pray your will be done. We pray your will be done. Your kingdom, your rule and reign and authority would break into Eric's life and ministry and his church. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. We bless our brother uh, with an increasing uh, measure of your spirit to do what you have called them to do. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I'm, I'm hearing provision. I'm hearing the word provision. And, and that the Lord is going to bring people alongside, not just in the sense of money and finances, but he's going to provide. Uh, he's going to provide people to do the work, uh, and I see I see people in your congregation that up until now they they they've been kind of struggling. Maybe you see them as people who are weak, uh, but the Lord is doing something in them. Your prayers, the Lord is saying that your prayers for them are being answered, and the the timing, God's timing for these individuals is. Is, is accelerating and even by the time you come back that you'll see, you'll run into people you, and you'll say, what, what's happened here? And the Lord, the Lord will have moved in your absence to do what only He can do. And in your absence, there's been a strengthening, not a weakening, but a, a strengthening of your fellowship and a maturing of, of certain people there that maybe you, you it's just surprised. You will be surprised by the voice of God. You'll be surprised by the work of God in your midst, in your in your congregation. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. Uh, Eric, um, you've been called to raise up an army. You have been called to raise up an army. It's um, the you know how there's different um, visual uh, things that God says we are. He says we're an army, but he also says we're a family. And the reason that you have been called to, because you stand in your authority, but you're also gentle. You're not harsh. And so you have the heart of a father. And so that he, the Lord has chosen you because he wants them to look like you. <laughs> and so... Um, because you're not just raising up like good soldiers who will do what they're told. You're not, that's not what you're called to do. You are called to be a father to these people because what you are to impart to them is their identity, their identity in Jesus. That is what's going to be the strength of this army as a people who know who they are, know who they belong to, and know what they possess in the Lord. And so I bless you in the name of Jesus to be an equipper and one that pours in to raise up the army of the Lord yes, who will do great exploits for the kingdom of God and Amen. that the ministry Amen. will be Amen. multiplied, multiplied, Amen. multiplied, Amen. multiplied Amen. so many times over because you can only go to so many places. You are one person. But as you multiply yourself and raise up this army, um, so much multiplication and expansion for God's kingdom will happen. And so the very, very first scripture that Ralph read about Moses' heart, oh, that they would all prophesy. That's your heart. Mm. Oh, that they would mm. all move mm. in signs and wonders and in, in glory and words and knowledge. That's your heart. Thank you, Jesus. And so I bless you to do the work that God's called you to do. And, and, the, and the knowledge 
that the Lord trusts you and has chosen you for this work. It's uh, in this day, in this hour, we bless you from this house, from this congregation to do the work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just love how the Lord works because before you started speaking, Kathy, I was um, I had Ezekiel and to raise up an army of dry bones. Mm. And so I just, um, Eric, I just feel like the Lord is, um, yeah, he is calling you to raise up an army of these dry bones. You are to breathe life into them, that the Holy Spirit will just come and blow across your church, across your country, and will just go far, far, and that there would be life. Life Life-giving words will come from your mouth and from those that you are raising up. Yes. Yes. So I just, I just bless you with, with the spirit of Ezekiel, that you with his, oh, yeah, with your, your tender heart that follows the Father. Thank and you as Lord. you follow the Father, yeah, that others will follow as well. Yeah, so we just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in Eric's life. We thank you, Lord, that you have given him this vision of uh, just not a small vision, but a large vision for his country and for his people. So we thank you for that, Lord. And we just look forward to what you're going to do through, through this you, man Lord. of God whose favor goes before him. Whose favor goes before thank him. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. So Eric, what, when I was sitting here and asking the Lord to show me his heart for you and what, what is it that he wants me to share, he gave me a picture of waves on a beach, but not hard crashing waves, gently rolling waves coming in and then reversing out in waves, going back out into the ocean. And so, but everything is gentle. Everything, it's not, it's not um, crashing waves. It's not pounding waves. It's rolling waves. It's rolling waves. And I had no idea, what does this mean, Lord? All of the th- and so it's the things, the the love, the the care, the shepherding, um, the 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 training that you have been um, pouring into your people, into your church. The nurturing um, is now the tide is turning, and so what's going to be happening is the nurturing that has been poured in is now going to be poured out through your church, through your yes, people, Lord. through the people that you have been shepherding and pastoring and, and, and loving. And it's going to be poured out. And it's, 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 go, it's like it's going back into the ocean in a gentle way, but a consistent way. And it's going to continue to go and to go and to reach more and to reach more. And it's going to, to, to absorb into your outside of your church into the into the community. I, I don't know how far, but outside of the church and into the community and just keep going as waves are absorbed into the ocean and and it just has far it's very far reaching. Again, it's it's gentle, but Amen. it's consistent Amen. and it's um it's at God's hand. And and so Eric, I bless you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless your heart. And Lord, I pray protection over this man, over his body, over his soul, over his spirit, over his family, over his finances, over his health, over his community, over every part of him. I pray your blessing. I pray your protection. I pray your provision. Lord, go before him, go behind him, go with him. In all ways, Lord, make his way straight. And Lord, I know that we have talked about how we have plans, but your plans always prevail. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give him a heart and a mind and a spirit that sees what you are unfolding before him and that he would go with just eager anticipation to see what you have done, what you have provided, where you have opened doors for him, where you have made pathways straight, Lord, Lord, that he would walk in confidence knowing that you go before him. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
God, I thank you for Eric. I thank you for his precious self before you. And I thank you that you've <coughs> anointed him to speak your word. And I believe that you have two main words for him to be speaking. One is about our his church's identity in you, and the other is about love. The, so, Lord, I have the scripture um, about love, and I pray it over, over Eric. Lord, we remember that you are love. Mm. So everything in this scripture is who you are, and we want to be all of these things, and I ask that you'd enable, empower, and anoint Eric to be these things and to preach these things, teach these things, um, and live out these things for your glory. Thank you, Father. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, and love never fails. And we thank you, Lord, that your love won't fail, Eric, nor his pe and the people that you call him to. And Lord, I also had one more scripture to pray over him, and that is um, Isaiah 62. Uh, and it says, you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. Mm. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Mm. You will no longer be called deserted or your land desolate, but you will be called Hepzibah and your land Beulah. Hepzibah means my, my beloved and Beulah means married. Mm. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a maiden, so you, you, will your sons marry you. As the bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will God rejoice over you. And I, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you rejoice over Eric and his congregation. And I pray for miracles, manifestations, healings, words, your presence, yes, your Lord. truth, prophecies to come to show him that you are there you are speaking, and you are God in his midst, and that you love them dearly. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray you would go before him on his trip back, this stop that he has in Colorado and also in, in uh, the Midwest. Um, bless those times. We, we ask that you would set the agenda, that you would create the day and form the day, that all of his time here would be optimized and we we pray for kingdom, um, kingdom connections. Lord, that you would create connections, even with individuals that he is not anticipated, that friendships would come, would, would be made, and strategic, a strategic relational partnerships would form that he had not anticipated and not foreseen. We pray for divine surprises. Yeah. We bless you with that, with, with good things from the hand of God. And, and that the Father would go before you and keep you in perfect peace and reveal his glorious face to you. And we bless what God's doing in, the, in your doctrine of ministry. Uh, that... Uh, especially uh, that the Lord would use you and guide you in this writing whatever your your missional thesis your your 
your paper, that that would be something that would be um, from the hand of God, that would be God's will, and and that something as a result of that would it would result in a great harvest. This I think this song, the song "So Come," is um, speaking to you from Amos nine. Behold, the days are coming, saith the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the reaper. And, you know, no sooner are there you, you harvesting than, than ahead of you where you have not even sown, you're reaping. And the, God is, you're, you're, I think you're in a season of acceleration like that because that's, God will do that. It's God's doing and you're going to see now um, fruit uh, from places where you've not even uh, sown, because that's just the goodness of God. And we bless, we bless. I see also your heart as a an apostolic leader. Um, that the Lord is giving you and forming dynamic partnerships within Uganda. For the kingdom of God, friendships that go beyond the um, the denominational and local church um, connections. I, I see, that and, and I bless what the Father's doing there with men and women of God who are like-minded and who are committed to the kingdom as you are. We thank you, Jesus, for for what you're doing, Lord. Bless you, Father. Pray a spirit of refreshment over you. Yes, Lord. So the, the, um, this is you like this uh, stream of, of water that is kind of deep. And I say deep, and the Lord is doing so much under the surface right now. Yeah, he's just doing, he's doing a lot under the surface, and he sets the course of the river. And so I just, um, this is that words of the song, dip your heart into the streams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of life. Oh yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. So dip your heart, mm. Eric, into the streams of life. Jesus, more, Jesus, more. Lord, just fill you and refresh you, as you just dip your heart into His heart. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Just pray for just a spirit of refreshment to overcome you, and just breathe into you as you drink in Thank you. the Thank love you. that He has for you, because He is so pleased with you. Amen. He is so pleased with you, Eric. He just cherishes you. Yeah, he is just holding on to you. Thank you, Father. Yeah. yeah. So we thank you, Lord, that you never let go. <laughs> that you'll hold on to you. Yes, him Lord. And bring refreshment. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, we're going to say goodbye to those online. And if you had any words, um, thank you for hanging on. If any of you have hung on, uh, <laughs> you're you're important. And if you have any prayers or anything, let us know, and we'll. Communicate that to, to Eric. Any impressions? Any words? Um, and and those and we'll see you next week. Uh, we will do the uh, after church thing, especially, um, yeah, because we couldn't do it today. God bless you all. <laughs>